Hi friends, welcome to Biology Exams for A.com. Today we will be discussing 5 questions on glycolysis within 5 minutes. Let's begin. Question number 1. Why glycolysis is known as universal ancient pathway? This is Clostridium botulinum that is causing botulism. This is Clostridium tetani that is causing tetanus. Both these organisms are strict anaerobes that means it cannot live in the presence of oxygen. This is Lactobacillus, the common species in milk. This is a facultative organism that means it's generally anaerobic but it can tolerate oxygen or it can live in the presence of oxygen. All other organisms, algae, fungi, plants and animals all are aerobes. That means it requires oxygen for their survival. In all these organisms, there is a common pathway which is called as glycolysis for energy production where glucose is converted to pyruvate with the release of energy. It occurs in the cytosol of the cytoplasm. Therefore, glycolysis takes place in all living cells. That is why it is called as universal common ancient pathway. Moving into question number two, is glycolysis aerobic or anaerobic? Glycolysis is a 10-step process where glucose splits up to form two pyruvate molecules with the release of energy as ATP. In all these processes, oxygen is not involved. Therefore, glycolysis is anaerobic. But glycolysis can happen in the presence or absence of oxygen. Question number three, is glycolysis a partial oxidation of glucose? As you see in glycolysis, this six carbon glucose is converted to two, three carbon pyruvate with the release of energy as ATP. So this is the actual reaction. Glucose is converted to pyruvic acid. In each cell, this is converted to ethanol and carbon dioxide. Further, we call it as alcoholic fermentation. Whereas in higher animals, in muscles, this pyruvic acid in anaerobic condition that is converted to lactic acid, that is called as lactic acid fermentation. Now let us see what is complete oxidation. In aerobic condition, this pyruvate enters mitochondria and approximately 30 more ATP is synthesized in that process. Only 2 ATP is synthesized in glycolysis majority of the ATP is synthesized during aerobic cellular respiration. So, in complete oxidation, this glucose is completely oxidized to carbon dioxide and water with the release of approximately 32 ATP molecules. So, in glycolysis, this glucose is converted to a 3 carbon pyruvate that can be further oxidized to release energy. That is why glucose is partially oxidized to 2 pyruvate in glycolysis. Question number 4. Why is glycolysis also known as EMP pathway? These are the three scientists Gustav Emperden, Jakubarnas and Otto Meyerhoff. EMP stands for Emperden, Parnas and Meyerhoff who discovered the most common type of glycolytic pathway that is happening in majority of organisms. There are other pathways like Edner Dundroff pathway that is happening in some gram negative bacteria. But this EMP pathway discovered by the scientist is the most common pathway that is happening in all organisms. And finally, how RBC get energy without mitochondria? So this is RBC, red blood cells. RBC gets energy by glycolysis. As we know, RBC is simply a sac with hemoglobin protein that carries oxygen. It is meant for caseous exchange. In RBC, organelles are absent. It, it is without nucleus. So how it gets energy? It is by glycolysis. In RBC, the glucose that is taken up from the bloodstream is converted to lactate with the release of 2 ATP and that is used by these cells and the lactate produced is released into the bloodstream and that is later removed. So 
RPC gets energy by glycolysis. So we have given a detailed video on 10 steps on glycolysis. You can refer that for more. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsforay.com.